You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. Coming out of Saturday's loss to Florida State, there were probably two gigantic questions that people had, one on either side of the ball. Uh, one was, of course, the thing that everybody talks about, pushing the ball down the field with the quarterbacks. The other is, why did Harold Perkins disappear? We saw this guy as an elite pass rusher a year ago where he didn't really even start until after that. I mean, really, the, the old Miss game is when the light bulb came on, he went in, the whole game changed, and then he had an All-American season after that. And we all looked and said, are you, are you overthinking things by trying to reinvent the wheel by putting that guy inside as an off-ball linebacker? Gary Beckwith was here earlier this week, said the same thing. Basically, everybody said the same thing. On Monday, Brian Kelly was asked that. He was, I think the way the, the question was phrased was, can you afford not to have Harold Perkins rushing the passer? Certainly a question that we have talked about. There's a lot going on. And you could clearly look at Harold and what he's asked to do versus, you know, lining him up off the edge. Player development has to be thought about. You know, where he goes uh, at the next level has to be thought about and then impacting our team. So I think that there is a, I think there's a happy medium there uh, that we could probably strike. Uh, and we've already begun to look at how we can be most effective for, for Harold and for LSU. Okay, that's fantastic news. How, already started to look at it. How can we be most effective for Harold and for LSU? That was on Tuesday. Um, about 36 hours, not even 36 hours later. Um, uh, let's call it 30 hours later. LSU has practice, and after practice, players meet with the media. Among them were... Uh, Jaden Daniels, Mason Smith got to speak to the media. That was really cool. Noah Kane met with the media and Omar Spates. So Omar Spates is a linebacker, all-conference linebacker during his time there at Oregon State. Really good player. Played alongside Harold Perkins in that off-ball linebacker spot this past weekend against Florida State. And you, know, you asked the question of Brian Kelly, you're going to ask it to a linebacker. Hey, man. Y'all going to move Harold Perkins back into his old role this week? Here's what Omar Spade said. I think this week we're going to put him in more outside the box, like let him let him be him type stuff this week. So bring Greg Penn back in the box, you know, open up some opportunities for him. I think it's going to be good this week. Now the truth shall set you free. Sometimes you just got to ask a 22-year-old. Don't ask the 60-year-old that's been coaching football for 33 years They've been a head coach for that long who knows how to sort of deftly maneuver around your questions. Go ask the kid, hey, man, what y'all going to do with Harold Perkins? Yeah, we're going to bring Greg, Greg Penn back in the box. It, it's, I want to remind you, uh, you know, Micah Baskerville led LSU in tackles a year ago with 89. Greg Penn had 78. He was the second leading tackler on the team. I'm not telling you that Greg Penn is as physically imposing or as much of a game changer as Harold Perkins. But Greg Penn is your prototype. He's 6'2", 235. He is that big-bodied off-ball linebacker that you're playing in the middle of a defense that stuffs the run and you hope can be mobile enough to, to turn and run if he needs to, to, to guard a tight end. You probably, if you're a really heady offensive coordinator, you'll create some mismatches there. And there's a reason why LSU had a nice rotation there at linebacker. And sometimes you saw Greg Penn come off the field a year ago, and they would go to a dime package where you'd see more safeties on the field. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. And we saw Matt House do it really effectively a year ago, but we also saw Greg Penn play in 14 games and have 78 tackles and six TFLs and three pass breakups and three quarterback hurries, and he had a fumble recovery, and he had a really, really productive year as a rotational piece. So, today, today, September the 7th, 2023, in the year of our Lord, 2023, Greg Penn is a better off-ball linebacker today than Harold Perkins. Now, 
if you commit Harold Perkins to being that all year and all next year, Harold Perkins is a much higher ceiling at that spot. I don't think anybody would would debate that at all. Harold Perkins is a physical freak. He was a five-star, was committed to A&M, LSU flipped him, all that stuff. There's a reason why he, he was what he was and why he is who he is. But can you afford to let Harold Perkins learn all season that position when you're secondary struggling and you desperately need someone to go rush the passer and you have someone who's really, really good at it? Uh, Omar Spates might have spilled the beans. Now, you're playing Grambling this week, so it really might not matter. But this would be a really good opportunity, a, a dress rehearsal of sorts, to, if you, to see if you are going to move the chess pieces on the board a little bit to see how it looks and to get Greg Penn running out there next to a guy like Omar Spates. Let them go side by side. You've got West Weeks as well. I've told you before they love Wit Weeks, the freshman, uh, four-star freshman linebacker who's going to be a really good player in this defense. Maybe this is an opportunity to get those guys some run and see how those rotations may go. So, uh, a lot of you asked for it, and uh, it appears as though you are going to see it on on Saturday in Tiger Stadium with um, uh, with Harold Perkins moving back outside the box, and we'll see how it goes this weekend with the Gremlin Tigers coming in. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.